What's up everyone, I'm Carmine and you're watching Super Carmio. In today's episode, I'm going to introduce you guys to a car you've probably seen in the background of a ton of my videos, my Mark IV GTI. The GTI was my daily up until about a year or so ago uh, when the power steering rack completely blew out and before that I kind of developed a really nasty exhaust leak which made the drivability pretty awful. Uh, so at that point I decided to just switch the Evo to daily driver duties. It's been a really fun daily um, for the past year but I do want to do some more serious work with it and having to depend on it to work the next day I can't really do that. And you might be thinking, oh, what about the Miata? But uh, I don't think that's at a point to be a reliable daily just yet. There's just a few more kinks I want to work out. Uh, so I am deciding to focus some of my effort on getting this thing back on the road again. It was a pretty fun daily. It basically had all the bolt-ons you could throw at it, including a tune, turbo back, front mount, intake, uh, suspension. And one of the first things you'll notice are the Evo wheels on it, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it was a fun little car. Um, so uh, I think what we're going to do today is replace this power steering rack, uh, but most importantly get this thing presentable so we need to give it a really deep wash um, and if we have time we'll investigate the exhaust leak. Let's get to it. Uh, much better. It's not perfect but at least now it'll be presentable and uh, clean enough to work on. Alright so the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the steering shaft the rack from the inside so it's right behind that plate underneath the pedals so I believe there are three bolts so we'll just unbolt those and uh, then unhook the shaft from the steering rack this cover is actually held on by those two plastic clips um, so you'll just want to pry those off. And now we'll turn the steering wheel until the 13 millimeter bolt is exposed. And after you get that 13 millimeter bolt off, you could use a large flathead to separate the shaft from the rack. As you can see, now separated. All right with the steering shaft disconnected we are going to loosen our front wheels so that we'll be able to disconnect the tie rods easier and uh, we're going to get this car in the air. Next, we're going to break but not remove the four 13 mil bolts that are holding the rack to the subframe. So, one, two, three, four. Then we'll remove the two 16 mil bolts that are connected in the transmission to this dog bone mount. And don't forget, the longer bolt is at the rear of the engine and the shorter bolt is closer to the middle. Next we'll remove the four 21 mil bolts that are holding the subframe to the frame. Keep in mind we're gonna wanna put a jack underneath this subframe so that we could support it and slowly lower it after we remove the bolts. Okay. 
Then we'll use a really long extension to get those two 19 millimeter bolts. Also have a drip pan so that any fluid will be caught. If you haven't already, you should drain the system, but uh, mine pretty much drained itself. Now we'll finish removing the four 13 mil bolts holding the rack to the subframe and then slide it out. One thing I did forget to mention is there was another nut right here that was holding one of the lines to the rack. So you'll want to remove that before dropping it. I'm going to measure the threads to the nut of this outer tie rod end um, when I'm installing the new one. So the reason I'm doing this is just to try to keep the alignment as close to possible as, uh, as it was before. But uh, I'll probably have to get it aligned anyways. But uh, hopefully this will get me close. And lastly, before we put this back in, we're going to transfer over that shield from their old rack to the new one. Another thing I almost forgot to do is transfer this passenger side mount to this new rack. Now note you'll need two crush washers uh, for both bolts. So you'll have a washer behind the line and then a washer underneath the line going into the rack. Okay, now I'm going to torque these four subframe to power steering rack bolts to 15 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. Okay, now we're going to torque the banjo bolts. The top bigger bolt will be torqued down to 33 foot-pounds and the smaller lower bolt will be 28 foot-pounds. Okay, now we're going to raise our subframe and then reinstall our subframe bolts and torque them to 75 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. Now we're going to reinstall our dog bone mount bolts. Remember the bigger bolt is on the rear and these are going to be torqued down to 37 foot-pounds. And now we'll install our tie rod ends. And we'll torque these bolts to 33 foot pounds. All right, to wrap things up, we're gonna top off our power steering fluid. We're gonna use the good stuff, CHF 11S. I don't believe you should use any other type of power steering fluid for these type of German cars. Um, so we're going to fill that up and then start the car and we'll be looking for any leaks. Hopefully we won't have any. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for today. Installing that new rack honestly wasn't too bad. Uh, just got a little bit dirty, a lot of grease and grime underneath there. But all in all it went pretty smooth. We didn't have enough time to fully fix the exhaust issue, but I was able to determine that uh, the leak is actually coming from where the downpipe mates to the turbo. The welds are just completely gone. So we'll get a new downpipe installed in the next episode and then get this thing back on the road. Future plans will include cleaning this thing up further, maybe changing up the wheels, uh, making it a little bit more aggressive, and then making this thing just a pure daily slash uh, utility vehicle. Just, you know, if I want to dump some stuff in there from Home Depot and stuff like that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.